lost since our last commencement and recognize their impact on the Walden legacy. The names of these individuals are also in your commencement book. Please join me in honoring their memories with a moment of silence. I would now like to invite our university president, Jonathan Kaplan, to the podium. President Kaplan has the honor of introducing this afternoon's distinguished speaker. Jonathan? Go, oh, Jonathan. Thank you, Paula. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker, the former foreign minister and first lady of Somaliland, Edna Adan. The seeds of Ms. Adan's success and determination were sown early when she was growing up as the daughter of a Somali medical doctor in Hargeisa. At the age of 15, she enrolled as a student and later worked as a teacher at a girls' school in Somaliland. There she was awarded one of a few coveted scholarships to study in Great Britain, where she spent seven years studying nursing, midwifery, and hospital management. When she returned home, she became the first qualified nurse midwife in Somaliland and the first Somali woman to drive a car. But that was only the beginning. Ms. Adan had a dream, a dream of building a hospital devoted to the care of women and mothers in Somalia. Unfortunately, this dream would have to wait for the end of the Somali Civil War, which began in the mid-1980s, and forced her to flee her country. While she was living abroad, the World Health Organization recruited her to serve in various positions. She was an advocate for the abolition of female genital cutting. She trained midwives and traditional birth attendants in 22 countries. And from 1991 to 1997, she served as the World Health Organization's representative in Djibouti. But all the while, the dream lived on. When Ms. Adan was finally able to return to her homeland, she sold all of her possessions to purchase the only location available for a hospital in Hargeisa. Thanks to her dedication and that of her staff, the Edna Adan University Teaching Hospital was officially open in March 2002, and it has <laughs> it has cut the maternal mortality rate of its patients to one fourth of the national average. And today, she continues to live her dream as she works to bring medical care to all of Somaliland. And two years ago, Ms. Adan opened Edna Adan University. Edna Adan's achievements are a testament to what courage, determination, hard work, and a deep and abiding belief in social change can truly accomplish. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Edna Adan. Proof of your 
accomplishments. And although it took me over two days to get here from Somaliland, I am proud to deliver this commencement speech to over a thousand graduates who are here with us today, as well as the broader family of Warden University, where another 6,000 are graduating. And I believe graduates come from over 98 countries in the world. It makes me so proud. Thank you, Walden University, for giving me this great honor. Now let me start by congratulating you on your successes, as well as your achievements. Because without that, you would not be here today. But also allow me to inspire you and to uh, address you so that you may look into the future and see how you can solve some of the problems of your community around the world because that is what you studied so hard for. Hopefully, you will be motivated to put to practice all the ideas and strategies you have learned from Walden University. That is where you must excel. That is the proof of your accomplishments. You owe it to yourselves and you owe it to your community. Let me also share with you some of the opportunities that I have had, but also some of the many obstacles I've had to face, to face in my lifetime to get to where I am today. I will begin with my schooling because most likely many of you come from countries where there are schools. It's only natural to send your child to school and most probably the governments of your countries sponsor schools to give every child in your country an opportunity to learn to read and write. In the real world, there are countries where even when there are schools, education is not within the reach of every child. In a few countries, Education may even be considered unacceptable and undesirable for some of them, and particularly for girls. I cannot think of a better example than that of Malala, who risked her life in order to get an education, and who recently was awarded As a child, I too faced that obstacle because I was born in a country, British Somaliland Protectorate, where there was simply no, girl, no school for girls. In fact, teaching a girl to read and write was considered to be unwise and people believed that nothing good could come of teaching a girl to read and write. Let her stay at home, learn to cook prepare herself to become a wife instead of wasting time to read and write like boys. Now fortunately, I was blessed to have a father who believed in education. Someone who was known as the father of healthcare in my country and someone who continues to inspire me even though he is no longer with me. And whatever I do, I always try to do things the way maybe he would have liked me to do it. A man who understood the value of education and in order to get me to learn to read and write, he turned a space in our house into a makeshift classroom, invited the boys from the neighborhood to come and do their homework there and to be tutored by a private teacher. And in the meantime, I too was taught to read, to write, and to decipher that magic of the alphabet. And because I was learning with boys who 
who had two or three years ahead of me and who already could read and write, I had a lot of catching up to do. And that also instilled in me that effort to compete, to catch up, to reach up to that person or people who were ahead of me. And that is how I learned to read and write. But then there are times when you think you cannot continue. When we were flown on Air Force One, yes. And we were flown to Cape Canaveral, not far from here, where the first spaceship was being prepared to take man to the moon. Somewhere in the logbook, maybe on the moon or maybe on Cape Kennedy, there is a logbook without signatures on it. Wow. Not at all. And those were the right days. The days when we would travel to countries and when my husband and his delegation would be met by heads of states, we would be met with 21 gun salutes and red carpets, the great days that were so grand, and indeed moments that made us so proud to be representing the Somali people. But then little did I know then that the following year there would be a communist military coup that would kill the president, put my husband and his government in jail, put me under house arrest, take everything we had, and actually turned the country around to being, from being a democratic country to, to becoming a communist dictatorship. I survived that revolution with $83 to my name. Mm. Mm. So when released, after six months of house arrest, I had two choices. I could just spend the rest of my life moaning and groaning about what I had lost and what, what I had, or picking myself up and doing what I enjoy doing most, nursing and midwifery. Trickle down effect. That is the future of our people. 
now that you have become equipped with education and you have acquired that degree that you have fought for for so long from Walden University, I hope that you too will find that spark that exists in everybody's heart and that you will put your achievements and your academic achievements to good use. I hope that you will find that cause that you feel very passionate about. And whenever you have obstacles and whenever you meet those who have doubts about your achievements and your capabilities, you will rise up to the occasion to prove to everybody that yes, you can do it. Exams, but this graduation also places a very important responsibility upon you because you need to show to all what you can do with that degree. And my advice to you is to set yourself goals. Never depend on others to keep climbing that ladder. Climb it with your own efforts. Go towards what you are aiming for with your own energy and your own efforts. Never fear failure because you will learn from it and you will become that much stronger from that experience. And of course, never, ever give up. Today you have satisfied your teachers. Today you have graduated from your respect respective courses. You have made your parents, your partners, your children, your grandchildren, and of course, Walden University proud. But your graduation is just the beginning. Because in you, I see more than a graduation. I see ambition. I see determination. I see hope. I see success, I see the future, so find your dream, set yourself goals, and ladies and gentlemen, go for it. Board of 
directors of Walden University by the state of Minnesota, I confer upon you the degree of education specialist with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. receiving a master's degree, please rise. Please include candidates for the degrees of Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, Executive Master of Business Administration, Master of Healthcare Administration, Master of Information Systems Management, Master of Public Administration, Master of Dr. Brian Nelson. <laughs> I 
guys like to hold her till she starts to cry. And then they're like, okay, she hurts. Dr. Susan Thomas. Dr. Carolyn Hunt. Sorry. Pull that back. Which bachelor is this?
change right now.
think I Susan Newton. No, that wasn't her. I thought that was her.
You now move into the next phase of your life. I hope you will take what you've learned at Melvin and use it to better not only your own life, but also the lives of those in your communities. That is what we mean at Melvin when we say we are committed to affecting positive social change. This concludes Walden's 53rd commencement ceremony.
here, but I didn't say anything. Tell so me that again. But not everybody with medallion has a 4.0. It's only the people with medallions with black and yellow. Like there were people with blue and yellow. That just is another option.